Hi, it's Keith from Kegland, and today we're talking about this humble carbonation cap. These have been around since I started home brewing many years ago. And to be honest with you, it's a product which we've made a lot of changes to and incremental changes over time using feedback from our customer base. So thanks to all you guys have sent emails and requests and stuff like that, we really appreciate it. But the feedback has enabled us to continually improve and make tweaks to the product. But we're up to generation three now of these, um, but we've never publicly really sort of spoken about the changes. I thought this would be a good opportunity to do a video on carbonation caps, talk about the upgrades and talk about some of the applications in how they're used. Now the first company to make carbonation cap is a company called Liquid Bread. Now that company back, oh it must have been like 20 years ago, had a patent on these and which has since expired. And the carbonation caps really were only made for one purpose and that was to go onto soda bottles like this. And then what you would do is you would get a, a cylinder of gas, something like that for instance, and you would basically charge up the bottle, give it a bit of a shake. You have to make sure obviously the, uh, the liquid's cold to begin with so it carbonates easily. Um, and then you just disconnect it like that and then you can pour yourself out some, you know, some carbonated water. Now the benefit of doing that obviously is the fact that you'll just save yourself a whole lot of money compared to, you know, using a soda stream bottle or something like that because these larger cylinders are far more economical. So look, that's sort of the original application of how carbonation caps came about. And obviously you could do heaps of stuff. You could carbonate, for instance, white wine and turn it into, you know, champagne or something like that, or, or sparkling wine, I should say. Or you could get a sample out of your fermenter and then take that from your fermenter and carbonate it and taste it, what the finished beer would taste like, uh, you know, once it's uh, carbonated, if you bottle, bottle condition or something like that, and get a bit of a heads up on what that's gonna taste like. But since then, a lot of developments have taken place. When we first made our carbonation caps, we made sure they fit both the gas and liquid posts. And that was a change from the liquid bread one. So you could put these gray disconnects, but they would also take these black disconnects. And that means it opened up other opportunities. For instance, what you could do is put a dip tube on, on here, which is another difference between ours and liquid bread. So that way you could actually counter pressure fill a you know PT bottle like this, so an old Coke bottle or something like that, you could basically purge the gas out, use the dip tube and actually fill up with beer. So there's plenty of other videos online about how to do that. There's not much point for me to go over that because probably most of you guys have already heard of it. The other thing you could do with that tea piece, we then started to make these. So these are like little tea pieces here where you could actually, you know, essentially put a, a gas and a liquid post on them, and then turn basically a you know a, a PT bottle like this this into a keg. So you could basically put gas in here, and then liquid get you know pushed up the dip tube, and then come out to a tap. So for a little small portable keg system, that's been fantastic. You know, other things that we've now sort of brought out since then is using the carbonation caps even for you know cleaning out your beer line so for instance we came out with this little adapter this is a t-piece here and basically you would put some sanitizer in there so if you want to drop that into the pt bottle like that now i'm using these uh, two and a half liter pt bottles that we also use as growlers and sell them on our website as well but you screw that on top like that and as you can imagine, you can just use this pump like that, pump the uh, contents up with a little bit of air. Obviously we don't care if air is getting into our sanitizer. And then basically, once you've got a sufficient amount of pressure, you can just clip on the disconnect and wash out your beer lines. Very, very handy device if you wanna just quickly clean out your beer lines and don't need to pull out the gas cylinder or whatever. The other thing you can do is do the same thing and actually use this as a keg as well. So if you just wanna take some keg, keg of beer to a party, uh, you didn't want to have to lug the gas cylinder. You could fill this up with beer, and if you weren't really too concerned about oxidation because you're gonna drink it straight away, um, then you could just pump it up with air. Once again, dispense it through like a small little tap system. So that's fantastic as well. The other thing we've done is created other little adapters to get used with them as well. So like another thing you do is if you, if you wanted to fill, for instance, off your kegerator beer tap, what you could do is get like a little connector like this and then screw this into the tap. You unscrew the nozzle from your Nuka Tap uh, SS or Nuka Tap FC, and then basically screw this into the tap, click this onto, for instance, a bottle like this, and then you can basically fill up beer directly into the uh, PT bottle. You can also do that an easier way and basically get, whoops, you can basically get this adapter. So this is an adapter where I've got a 3 8 piece of Ever Barrier beer line connected to a black ball lock disconnect. And I've got this other little spout adapter. So instead of having to unscrew the, the, the nozzle on the Nucatap FC or SS, I can just push it into the tap like this and then clip the ball lock disconnect 
on top of the PT bottle like so. And then I can basically fill up, you know, a PT bottle with beer as well, directly off the tap, off your kegerator without even having to open the door of the fridge. So another useful thing. But let me show you some of the changes that we've made to these carbonation caps over the years so you can understand how the improvements will affect you guys as users. When we first started making carbonation caps, we only made them in red. And uh, you know, that was great, but we noticed some people, if they were using them on the Firmzillas, they would get them confused. And let's say they've got a liquid and a gas post on the top of a ferment, a pressurizable fermenter they would get the wrong one connected to the wrong device. So shortly after that, we made a yellow one as well. Now, typically the yellow ones we use for liquid, just think of liquid gold and the red ones we use for gas. And we've color coded the disconnects that way as well. So if you look at the black disconnects, they've got yellow on the top and bottom. So we know that goes yellow to yellow. And then also if you look at the gas ball lock disconnects, they've got red on the top and bottom. So we know that they go together as well. Now, one of the benefits of being able to make a post like this exactly the same, because these come out of the same injection mold. So they're precisely the same and they do fit the other way around. So you can actually put this on this and this on this as well. Now, that's not typically the Cornelius standard. However, it's very, very handy in a lot of home brewing applications because for instance, you can push gas down a dip tube to carbonate faster, or for instance, you can also um, for instance, uh, try to clear out a filter. Let's say you've got a blockage in disconnect, you can actually force gas down that disconnect to try to you know, clean out a filter which might be on the other side or something like that. So there's plenty of applications where it's handy to be able to switch between the two, but that color coding is something that we've tried to standardize across the ones that we've made. The reason we didn't go with black and gray is because black and gray typically, you know, if we made, made them those colors, those types of devices, only go together with you know each other, which is why we needed to make kind of a new color standard, and also because our logo and our you know or everything we make is kind of red and yellow. It was kind of like a natural choice for us to go with this. Now, of course, we do make the stainless steel ones as well. These stainless steel carbonation caps are fantastic for people who, you know, want a stainless steel product, but. In my opinion, I think the plastics work even better than the stainless steel ones um, because they have this type of wedge seal. Uh, while the stainless steels use an O-ring. So the O-ring, if somebody twists this too hard or, you know, sometimes the O-ring can roll out a position or something like that, you know, if somebody hasn't, uh, if somebody's clipped it on something or something like that. But with a wedge seal, they're a far more reliable plastic seal because they're a hard plastic which seals on the smooth neck of the PET bottle. When we first brought out the earlier models of the carbonation cap, this wedge seal was quite strong and thick. We make these out of a polyketone substance. So all the plastic is really highly chemically related and very robust. Um, but we also found that this little wedge seal, so that little fin, I guess here, that's what's sealing on the neck of the PET bottle. So that's sealing essentially in this inside edge like that of the PET bottle and creating that seal. So this has to be a smooth edge there, which generally it is. That's how the uh, PET bottle neck standard is, and it's why the ISBT made that standard. But uh, we did find some people, if they were to over tighten the earlier models, they could damage potentially the neck on the PET bottle. So one thing we did was the next variation is we actually started to change this little fin in here, and we started to make this fin thinner and thinner, so that way it wouldn't put as much pressure on this internal damper of the neck of the bottle and didn't stress that neck of the bottle, I guess. So that meant with PET bottles, especially if they're very weak PET bottles, they're not designed for reuse, I guess, they were gonna last a lot longer when that happened. Um, with the latest generation though, we made even further changes. So we've changed now all to silicon O-rings. We found some customers, you know, with these O-rings they were using like a, we started off with a, a, a EPDM. Now EPDM is a fantastic sealing material, I love it. But one area where EPDM has some lower performance benefits is its spring property. So basically if it's cold in particular, you'll notice if the O-ring is in the fridge or something like that, it doesn't sort of spring up as quickly when it's cold and sort of takes a while for that sort of to, I guess, self-heal, I guess. So we changed that over to silicon in all the generation two models and now all the generation three models. But the other thing we've changed also is the barb assembly underneath. So if you look at these slightly older ones, if you take these out, you can see this, 
these have an o-ring here so see that little o-ring that we have on here this o-ring is you know was a great way for us to seal that barb into the underside of the carbonation cap but we made a further improvement now and actually removed that. So on all of the new carbonation caps, we tried to signify this change with a black barb on the back here. So if you just pull that out like that, yeah, as you can see, there's no O-ring at all. So what we did is we machined this part of the mold a little bit differently this time. We made this part of the mold very, very smooth on this sort of face here, and also the bore inside this hole is very smooth. So now with minimal amount of force, you can do that up, literally hand tight, and then about another half a turn with that. This is a 10 mil ring spanner. Look, you could use pliers if you're in a bit of a bind, um, but yeah, just give it a little tweak up like that. Technically, it should be up to about two and a half Newton meters, but look, not a lot of you guys probably have a torque wrench at home. So, you know, just do it up like so, and that's it. It seals very reliably, and we don't have another O-ring to worry about. Previously, you know, when people would disassemble and reassemble these, and typically that would only happen if somebody has cops, hops and stuff like that caught in the poppet spring, they'd clean out hops and stuff like out of here sometimes. They'd assemble it back together, and if that O-ring was to get caught or roll out of place, they wouldn't realize, and then they could potentially have a leak on their hand. So these have become even more reliable than they ever have been with these new Generation 3 models where it's got the black barb on them. Well, that's it guys, hope you enjoy using this really handy little and inexpensive device. You know, these are one of the favorite products that we have on our website. You know, even like this, a quick disconnect, an inline quick disconnect I'll put on the regulator so I can attach my gas line, you know, so handy. There's heaps of applications like that you can come up with these little things. If you've got any other ideas or cool ways of using this device, definitely whack it in the comments below and share it with somebody else as well. If you wanna to subscribe to the channel, you will hear about all the cool new stuff coming up. So of course, subscribe now, bottom right hand corner, and join our Facebook homebrew community group. There's thousands of others there sharing tips and tricks on how to get the most out of our gear. And of course, send us your feedback. That's how this type of stuff gets improved, and that's how uh, you know we continue to develop a lot of our products through feedback from our customer base. So we'd love to hear from you. Send us an email or put it in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time. Okay, bye.